In this session, uh, we are going to talk about the three types of t-test. The t-test can be undertaken on the data type scale, and the data type scale consists of either ratio or interval data. And for this session, we are going to start by looking at interval data. I will use SPSS 17 to demonstrate the t-test. Firstly, here are the questions that have generated the scale data. So if we consider the t-test as a hypothesis test, the questions that have generated the ratio data we are first going to look at are as follows. What is your gender? and the answers to that can be either male or female. And then we've got a series of questions which ask about schooling for different members of a respondent's family. The first of these questions is how many years did you attend school? Which refers to the respondent. The remaining three questions are about other people's schooling and it's expected that the respondent would know the answers to these. So the next question is, how many years did your spouse attend school? Obviously, some people may not have a spouse, and therefore they would leave that blank. We then go on to ask the respondent, how many years did their father attend school, and how many years did their mother attend school? Now, this gives us an opportunity to apply the different types of t-test, of which there are three. But the general hypotheses that are applied to the t-tests are essentially that there are no differences between means or as an alternative hypothesis, which we give the symbol H1 for, there is a difference between means. Now in this particular test, we are going to examine the difference between means based on your gender. Uh, when we split uh, a numerical scale into, in this case, two parts, male and female, we say that we group the data. So the correct wording for the hypotheses are null hypotheses, which should state no difference, should now read there is no difference between the means of years of schooling based on gender groups. The alternative hypothesis in this case is that there is a difference between means of years of schooling based on the gender of the groups. Now this set of data will allow us to undertake three different types of t-test. A further question will allow us to complete that set of three. It's a question that's being posed. Is the mean years of schooling five years ago was 11 years? Is this now different from today's mean level of schooling? So we'll address that later when we come to the three types of t-tests. Now we're going to follow this uh, procedure using SPSS 17 and I have a file here which has some schooling statistics uh, as variables. So here we can see on the SPSS data set that we have the respondent's gender, or in this case, because it's an American survey, they've called it respondent sex. We then have a variable educ, highest year of school completed by the respondent. A further three sets of data tell us about the highest year of school completed by the father of the respondent, the mother of the respondent, and the spouse associated with the respondent. The menu items that we will use to undertake the t-test can be found under the analyze menu and if we follow down on the list we can see that very near to the top we have the compare means option. The compare means option has three types of t-test highlighted. A one sample t-test an independent samples t-test and a paired sample t-test. Now as I go through these I'll explain some of the conditions that we require for the t-tests. 
but effectively what you've got to appreciate is that a paired sample t-test must have matched pairs. I'll give you an example of that. Here we have the educational experience for the respondent. Person number one claims that they had 12 years of schooling. The respondent has a match because they have a spouse. Okay, And you can see here that we've got down 97 years of schooling. Now that is clearly not correct. The 12 years of schooling has a match with a situation where the respondent does not know the answer. And any values that are unusually high in the 90s in this data set are missing values. So that would be classified as missing. The second person has 20 years of schooling and their spouse has also 20 years of schooling. And as we read through the data set, we can see that for each answer, with the exception of the first one, and now the exception of the fifth one, we have matches. And so what SPSS allows us to do is sift and collate those matches so we can undertake a paired t-test. So that is the condition for a paired t-test. There must be a match. With an independent sample t-test, this particular one, we effectively are looking at a situation where the scale is split for some reason and there are not equal amounts in the split. An example of that would be to split this particular scale by gender. We could split it by the twos and the ones, the males and the females. If we do that, we are not certain on whether or not there will be an equal number in the split of males and females. We have an unbalanced comparison set of columns. That would be classified as an independent type t-test. Similarly, males do not match females. That's clearly obvious and therefore where there is no match clearly then that is also the condition for an independent t-test. So they're the two tests that we're going to look at to start today. I'll begin with the independent t-test. But in order to facilitate that, we have to split our columns of interest by the variable gender. So let's affect that. If we go to analyze, if we go to compare means, and if we go to the independent t-test, I am going to select the highest year of school completed by the respondent. The respondent sex will allow us to group the variables into two groupings, male and female. So I will transfer the variable respondent sex and I'm immediately prompted for the codes for the groupings that I wish to create. I therefore have to define the groups. The codes for male and female are one and two. If I continue, I have now got a situation set up where I can split the highest year of school completed by gender, male and female. If I run this now as a, an analysis, the output can be found as follows. If we blow up the screen and look at the output tables, we can see that there are 633 males and 877 females. We therefore have an unbalanced set of data. Gives rise to the independent t-test. We can see that the male mean is 13.2 years of schooling and the female mean is 12.63 years of schooling. The hypotheses are there is no difference between the mean years of schooling based on your gender or there is a difference between the mean years of schooling based on your gender. The question therefore is, is the mean level of 13.23 years different to the mean level of 12.63 years for females? We can locate the 
critical value which allows us to accept the null or alternative hypothesis by observing the two-tailed p-value that we can find within the second table down on SPSS outputs and you can see that this value uh, or there are two values both of them are zero which one do we pick we have to assume that in this population the variances are equal in other words the males and females have no differences except for their gender they come from the same population and therefore we should assume that any variances outside of their gender are equal if for example the males came from one particular country and the females from another country we could not necessarily assume that we would therefore have to look at an adjusted figure where equal variances are not assumed in this case we look at the equal variances assumed it's zero and so we go back to our hypotheses which hypotheses do we accept we can see the conditions for the acceptance of either the null or the alternative hypotheses we accept the null hypotheses if the significance is greater than or equal to 0 0.05 we accept the alternative hypotheses if the significance is less than 0.05 here clearly the significance is less than 0.05 we therefore must conclude that there is no difference between the means uh, there is a difference between the means of the years of schooling based on the gender groups